audible audible right so how was the exam good bad ugly difficult easy good great how many of you felt it is easy sir yan easy an orikkalum parayilla how will others judge me no if i raise hands for easy how many questions did you attempt 60 out of 60 anybody who attempted 60 out of 60 nobody 50 50 plus be you are going to be future bureaucrats 640 plus 30 plus 20 plus 40 plus is obviously 20 plus also but i'm saying 20 to 30 range okay right <clears throat> so um, first my name is arjun and i am a faculty of chandrais academy i'll be teaching indian polity and public administration optionals here in trandum uh, so what we will be doing right now is we'll quickly go through certain questions right we will get an answer key of all the 60 questions you can go through certain questions i'll tell you how we can answer i how we could have answered certain questions uh from some tricks and tips right some memory you had you could you have used it to answer certain things i know these things might be a little uh, on the higher side for some of you right how many of your engineers okay non engineers from uh, humanities background science background okay so did all the scientists uh, make that quantum question right did you know what is quantum mechanics scientists or science background students physics how many of you are phys uh, you know done physics could you get that uh, quantum mechanics question right so it is a little difficult most of these questions uh, i'll say uh, is of upsc level like we have taken some questions from the upsc prelims i will show you one question actual question from the upsc prelims right so certain questions you might have found it a little difficult i know we know right certain questions are e will be easy for you you should have solved certain questions from your uh, memory understanding basic school level knowledge because some of these questions are taken from 10th ncrts the ncrt is still class 10th which we studied maybe long time back 5 years back 6 years back sir innala padichu polu orkunnilla pinneyana 5 varsham munbu padicha ncrts right so i understand again you would have prepared something so what i will be as i said what i will be doing is i will be going to certain questions which we have set in this question paper the other uh, questions if you have any doubts feel free to ask or we will give you answer key also right you can go through the answer key and check your scores so the first question i will be dealing is the question number 4 did you answer that question how many of you have seen the movie titanic all of us have would have seen titanic no anybody who have not seen titanic you should start watching movies if you have not seen titanic right so when you saw the movie titanic no there was a scene when rose sees fights first for the first time sees uh, usa do you remember that scene illa sir na rendu vayasu alla pakanda cinema aanu full marannu poi is it you don't see that so titanic this have you seen the real titanic no only movie titanic right so there is a scene if you remember that movie correctly there is a scene in which rose for the first time from where to where titanic was traveling from britain uk to usa right it was going to from london to new york right so she saw for the first time something in usa what did she see statue of liberty where is statue of liberty uh, located where is statue of liberty located this is not upsc knowledge this is common sensical knowledge where is statue of liberty located where is taj mahal located uh, agra basically agra where is statue of liberty located new york so you know this scene if you have remembered i think uh, might not have the volume so she is seeing statue of liberty which is in new york now you have to know which side of usa new york is located is it on the west coast or east coast too difficult so this is new york where is new york located east coast right so east coast le ed ocean aanu 
Atlantic Ocean. Aana, right? If you did not know anything about Titanic, that is also fine. Recently, a big tragedy happened. Did you uh, hear? We would be listening to people are dying, are they dying, are they alive, are they dying, are they alive? We would be focusing on that. In which ocean did the submersible Titan sink? They went to five people went to see Titanic and unfortunately this exploded and all the five people died. Where did this happen? Atlantic. Again, Atlantic Ocean. So in this question, see. 1912, RMS Titanic ship sank in Mariana Trench. We, you don't know about it. Let it be there. Mariana Trench is located in the Pacific Ocean. Right. Where did At At Titanic sink? That is the first thing you have to know. Titanic sank in Atlantic Ocean. So if it is in Atlantic Ocean, Mariana Trench will not be in Pacific Ocean. Either Mariana Trench is Pacific Ocean will be correct. Right. Angane Anangil first statement that Tarikim. Endo under that Tarikim. Because Titanic sank in Atlantic Ocean. Right. All angle, it is sherry an angle in the Tarikim. Second statement is the Tarikim. Gana Mariana Trench in that case should be in Atlantic Ocean. So, what is correct here? Second statement is correct here. First statement is actually wrong. Mariana Trench is a deep trench in the Pacific Ocean, 200 kilometers deep at Loru Trench on Mariana Trench. Right. Which you will study in your geography classes. Right. So, the answer to that question is. Answer to that question is B, two only, right. So this is how you solve UPSC questions. Certain questions you need not study, right. From certain common sense, certain knowledge, you will be able to solve. I'll show you one more question. Before that, I'll discuss a question from the question paper. Question number five. Have you any of you seen Indian map? Yes. Political map? Have any of you traveled through India? Kerala thana parathu vettu lethra verandu? Kulu manali trippe vettu lethra verandu? College in the Kulu Manali trip or Simla Portunda. Illa Simla Kulu Manali Simla. None of you have travelled. Kulu Manali Simla. No. Huh? Himachal. So where is Simla located? Himachal. So when you are travelling from Delhi to Shimla, you travel through Chandigarh or you from Shimla Chandigarh is further north. Hmm? That is the question you have to answer, you should know. So if you travel or otherwise, you should know the map of India. First, you have to identify which states these places are located. Where is Belgaum located? Yes, this is the knowledge you should have. Belgaum is located in Karnataka, which is in North India or South India? South, South India. India. Then Delhi, obviously, North. Chandigarh, where is Chandigarh located? Punjab, again, North India. Lucknow, which state? UP. Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, Simla, Himadal Pradesh, Nagpur, Maharashtra, state is Maharashtra. So which is further north, Uttar Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh? For this you have to know the Indian map, right, map is an important topic for UPSC, you should know Indian map. So I will say how you should study Indian map is, imagine that one day you will be travelling to all these places, you will, there is something called Bharat Darshan. Once you clear UPSC, you go to this training institute in Missouri. What is it called? Do you know? Labasana. It is called Lal Behadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. So from there, you will be taken for a Bharat Darshan. So you will be traveling through all these states. Even otherwise, you can travel. At Bangalore, Desi Kaliparin, Bangalore, Kohan, Kalyan Gaikan Dashila. So you can go and visit all these places by yourself. Now see the places where these states are located. Where is Simla located? Where is Chandigarh located? A little south. So which is the northernmost point here? Shimla. Below that? Chandigarh. Where is Delhi located? Further south. Right. These three things is important. Now you come down. Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, which is north. Which is on the upper side. See, Uttar Pradesh would be closer to Delhi. No, because Agra is in Uttar Pradesh only. Closer to Delhi. Madhya Pradesh is in, sorry, Bhopal is in Madhya Pradesh. And Maharashtra is further south. So, Nagpur will be further south and the southernmost place will be Belgaum, not shown the map, Belgaum. So, what will be the answer here? Option A, 6, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, 1. Right. I will show you one actual question from the UPSC paper. This question came in the prelims of 2017. Right. Can you answer this question? Not there in the question paper, but this is an actual UPSC question. Okay. 
Only you need two knowledge in this. I hope all of you know where Kottam is located. You do you know where Kottam is located? Right. So all of us Malayalis would have been happy to see this question. I was especially happy because I belong to Kottam. So my district's name came in the question paper. I was happy. The second point you should know is where is Kohima located? Where is Kohima located? Kohima is located in Naga land. Have you seen this movie? No. This is a Malayala movie called? Neela Gasham Pacha Kadal Chumanna Bhoomi. Where Dulkar Sarman goes to Naga land to see his girlfriend. He is not travelling from Kottam, he is actually travelling from Kolikot and he is going to Naga land. So if you have seen this movie, if you have observed this movie, he goes to certain places. He go, goes first goes to Bangalore, then he goes to uh, through Visha, Andhra, he reaches Odisha, then he goes to Kolkata. From there he is going to Naga land. So what are the minimum number of states you require? There is only one knowledge you need here, again from the map. see. There are, we have seven northeastern states. Do you know the no, name of northeastern states? We have seven northeastern states. Arunajal, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Assam, Meghalaya. Right. All the six northeastern states are connected to India through one state, which is called Assam. Right. You can travel from all the other six states only through Assam, then from Assam you will enter which state? West Bengal. Allengil Bangladesh could travel. If Bangladesh allows, that is another route. Else, all the other six states, be it Meghalaya, Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, Arnajal Pradesh, you can reach India and main uh, West Bengal only through Assam. So the first state, the question is that including two states, including the origin state and the destination state. So origin state is Kohima is in Nagaland and the destination state is obviously Kerala. Kerala. So from Nagaland you will first come to Assam. From Assam you will reach West Bengal. Now you have to see how you can reach Kerala. So obviously the shortest route is this eastern coast. So Odisha you will take. From Odisha you can reach Andhra Pradesh. From there either Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and you will reach Kerala. So this is a map based question which actually UPSC asked in the prelims. right? So these kind of map based questions also come. Now I'll go to question number seven. Are you aware? Are, do you enjoy rain? Yes. You enjoy. We all enjoy rain, no? Right. So Kerala get two types of monsoons. What are they called? Yes. Malayalathila. Kala varsham. Thum thum. Idiyodu vodi peena mare yana. Tula varsham. So in in uh, north east monsoon generally rain happens in the evening time. Thunder will be there. Whereas in uh, south west monsoon, it rains throughout the day. We are now experiencing which of this monsoon? South west monsoon, which is also called Kala Varsham. We call it Kala Varsham. When does it happen? After Onam or before Onam? So the question says, monsoon usually begins three months after the festival of Onam. Which is, is it right or wrong? Obviously wrong. It actually starts three months before. And northeast monsoon is our Tula Varsham. Right, Tula Varsham starts, when is Pongal? Jan 15, Jan middle, Jan middle is the Pongal. So three months before that our North East Monsoon will start. Is it right or wrong? Yes, yes because North East Monsoon starts somewhere in school. Like a Pongal, what do you June or March start, March March start, in or October like him. Idiot, idiot, idiot. So this is correct. Two is correct, one is wrong. So again the answer is B, two only, right. Then I will take 14. Question number 14. Have you read uh, any history books after 10th? No. 10th, have you do you remember the struggle which happened uh, in 1857? What is it called? Yes. First War of Indian Independence. This is the first organized revolt by Indians against British rule. It is also called Sipoi Mutiny. Malayalam cinema is Sipoi Lehala. Otherwise, it is not So it is also called Sipoi. What is Sipoi Mutiny meaning? It was started by the soldiers or the trigger was by the soldiers. Now you look into the statement. Two statements directly connect with army. Which are the statements? Disparity in salary and British propaganda of spreading Christianity in the army. So obviously, other random shady are Right, this is both army. Then which which option you can eliminate? Yes, 
Indian peasantry was actually struggling, which was one of the reasons of sepoy mutiny. But the first reason is not a you know, solid reason for the struggle. British brought in Indian education, sorry, English education, and people were more receptive to it. English education. That was not a major reason for the struggle. So the answer is option A. So this is sepoy mutiny. Then we'll go to question number 29. Have you heard about right to education? What is right to education? Have you enjoyed? Do you people get right to education? What is right to education? Hmm? What is right to education? Kate don't know right to education. And the right to education. It's a fundamental right we all enjoy. Are you people aware of fundamental rights? Yes. You people are given certain fundamental rights by a book called. Indian Constitution, right, which you should be aware of, which you will be studying in Indian polity. So, this right to education is a fundamental right which you people enjoy. What is right to education? Is it free education? Yes. yes. Free and compulsory education. Till what age? College poem of free and compulsory education on no. Till age of 14, that means till the ninth standard, you should be given mandatory free education, free and compulsory education. So which among the statements will be wrong? For obviously second statement should be wrong because college education is not a part of right to education. It is only till for year of 14. That means second statement is wrong. What about the first statement? So there are two kinds of rights. One is called a constitutional right. What is a constitutional right? A right given to us by this book called Constitution. So, right to education is a part of the constitution also. So, it is a constitutional right. What is a statutory right? Statutory right means parliament. Have you seen parliament? Have you heard about parliament? Now, we have built a new parliament. Right. So, similarly, there is a state legislature here. How many of you are from Trivandrum? Right. So, you will be seeing this name of every day when you are traveling here, there. How many of you are from outside Trivandrum? Yes. So just see the Niyamasava Mandram, it is called state legislature. So here the state laws are made in that state legislature. National laws are made in the parliament. So parliament makes a law to implement something that is called a statutory right. right. So right to education is a constitutional right as well as a statutory right. So the statement state RT is only a statutory right that is also wrong. So what is the answer? Yes, both of them are wrong, but the question asks which among the statement is not correct. So both statements are not correct. Answer is C, 1 and 2. Have you heard about this G20? What is G20? Group of 20 countries. Is it? No. Is it group of 20 countries? So what is why it is so important? Why it keeps coming in news? Yes, India is currently holding the presidency. Next G20 meeting is going to be conducted in New Delhi. Right, New Delhi. So the sub-meetings of that is happening across the country. One meeting happened in Kovalam. Another meeting happened in Kumrakam. So all these people are coming to Kerala to attend these meetings. That is not the main meeting. It is more like sub-meetings, small, small meetings to discuss all the things about G20. Now what is G20? Which are the countries in G20? So this is the logo of the current motto of G20 is One Earth, One Family, One Future, which is nothing but Vasudeva Kudumbakam. This is the logo or motto of current G20. Now, which are the countries in G20? These are the countries in G20. Once you know the world map, which Vishnu Sar will be teaching you, once you know the world map, it is easy to remember all these things from a map perspective. See, there are three big countries in North America. Which are the three big countries in North America? Canada, USA, Mexico. Come to South America. There are two major countries in South America. Which are the countries? You see football? You are Argentina fan? How many of you are Argentina fans? No Argentina fan, I am a Messi fan. No Argentina fans. How sad, only two people. Brazil fans, you know, only others don't watch football. So we are version from sports, no sports. Anyway, these are the two football legends also, two countries from South America as part of G20. Come to Europe, which are the major European economies. 
பிரிட்டன் பிரான்ஸ் ஜெர்மனி இட்டலி டர்க்கி ரஷ்யா ஆப்பிரிக்கன் ஒற்ற கண்ட்ரியே உள்ளு சவுத் ஆஃப்ரிக்கா தென் ஃப்ரம் ஏஷியா சவுதி இந்தியா சைனா இந்தோனேஷியா அண்ட் ஆஸ்திரேலியா எத்தனை கண்ட்ரீஸ் ஐ கவுண்ட் ஒன் டூ த்ரீ ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் சிக்ஸ் செவன் எயிட் நைன் டென் லெவன் டுவெல் தேர்ட்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டீன் செவன்டீன் எயிட்டீன் நைன்டீன் ஒன்லி நைன்டீன் கண்ட்ரீஸ் தென் வைட் இஸ் கால் ஜி டுவெண்டி த ட்வெண்ட்டி பார்ட் ஆஃப் ஜி டுவெண்டி இஸ் a union called european union so which statement will be wrong g20 does not comprise of 20 countries it comprises of 19 countries plus one union called european union which country hosted this conference just before india it was hosted by a southeast asian country called indonesia so which statement will also be wrong Three will also be wrong. So the answer is one and two. So these were the see the last conference of 2022 happened in Indonesia, right? So if you can eliminate two and three itself, if you can eliminate three itself, you will get the answer. If you know that three is wrong, look into the options. If you know that three is wrong, what is the only option remaining? Only option remaining is A. Jig economy, jig labor. Have you heard jig labor? What is jig labor? Jig labor. Ni jig economy are you lengi kudi? You look into the options. Right. Three of them look similar and one is altogether different. No. If you look into the options, Uber drivers, freelancers, somato delivery persons, government civil servants. Or which one do? Aye, that one stand out. Aye, no. Which one stands out? civil servants so answer will be 1 2 3 now what is a jig economy mostly unorganized sector right temporary jobs which is done by people is called jig economy right so the answer so it's a segment where it is flexible temporary freelancing jobs so answer here will be option a 1 2 3 <coughs> yes i'll take two more two max questions also 53 could you solve this question did you solve max questions So again, this max question it is easy to solve. You don't have to think too much. The price of an apple is decreased by twenty percent, and the new price is increased by twenty-five percent. What is the net change in price? How many of you did this question? Okay. So there are people who did not do it also. So how will you do the simple mathematical questions? Just a second. Right. So. this percentage questions it is easy to solve if you start with 100 as the base right so they are saying price of apple decreased by 20% imagine the price of apple is 100 rupees now if i am decreasing it by 20% what will be the new price 20% means it is reducing by 20 so it is now 80 rupees now what are we doing we are increasing the price by 25 percentage means 1/4 it will increase what is 1/4 of 80 Easy to divide. No, one fourth of eighty. Twenty, 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 twenty. Now, twenty, twenty, twenty. Eighty, I'll say. So we are increasing the price by one fourth of eighty. Twenty-five percent is nothing but again calculation on the manda. Easily mathematics. One fourth of twenty years, eighty. You are increasing the price by twenty rupees. So the new price will be. So what is the answer? A zero. And I'll discuss fifty-four also. Do you know east, west, south, north? the directions are you aware of it which is north this is north delhi is in north this is south this is east india da north east meghalaya mizoram north east trip poittu laarengal undo north east trip poittu alperi laarengal undo trip povanum thalperi illa endu shogam aanu Yes, at least you know we be aspiring to travel even if you don't travel. Now this is west, Gujarat ka west ila na, right? This is north, east, south, west. Now what is the question saying? Barbie started walking towards east. 
Barbie started walking towards east. After walking 2 kilometers, she turns 90 degree clockwise. So which is east? She is walking towards east. Now she is turning clockwise. Do you know what is clockwise? What is anti-clockwise? Clockwise is this. Anti-clockwise is opposite. Clock in the opposite direction is anti-clockwise. So she is turning 90 degree clockwise. She is turning like this. Now she is walking for 1 kilometer. Then she is turning 45 degree counterclockwise. So what is counterclockwise? This direction. So she is turning like this 45 degree she is turning. So which direction she is walking now? South east. So answer is A. South east. Right. So the rest of the questions you will get answer key because we don't we don't have the time to explain all the questions. Right. If you have any doubts, so I would like to introduce our faculty pool who is available here. Uh, so we have Vishnu sir. Sir, come please come to the stage. Vishnu sir, he is our geography faculty. Srinath sir is there. Srinath sir teaches uh, PSIR optional and economy. Anila ma'am is there. Anila ma'am. Yes, Anila ma'am is the economics optional faculty and she teaches economics. Please come on stage. See, all our faculty is not there because we have branches at multiple places. Chennai, Bangalore, Delhi. So we have faculty, history faculty, Shoban sir is at somewhere else. And all other faculties, please come on stage, sir. Yes, and we have Anandu sir. He is who is a faculty of current affairs and uh, essay. These are the faculty who is available here currently. Today we have all come to welcome you to the academy to do this test etc. This is our faculty currently available here. So Vishnu sir, geography faculty, Anandu sir, Anila ma'am and Srinath sir. And we have our branded here who is the Lena ma'am. Ma'am, you would have seen the beautiful, if you have not seen you would have at least spoke with her. She is the sweet face and sweet sound of Shangrai's Academy. She is a branch head, Lena ma'am. So ma'am has done her PhD from IIT Madras in Development Studies. Right. And then we have the team here, uh, Parvati, Shruti. I will I just introduce the academy to you because you are here. Parvati, Shruti, Srijit sir, he is our academic coordinator. So all your timetables, classes, all will be coordinated by Srijit sir. Nyangada Masilalian Anna, Srijit sir. And then we have uh, our coordinators, Parvati ma'am, Shruti ma'am and Unni sir. So they will be dealing with all your academic queries, okay. If you have any uh, queries in Shankar, most, some of you have, will be definitely joining Shankar. So this is Parvati ma'am, Shruti ma'am, Unni will be is our technical coordinator. He is always there. So this is the team which is available here right now. So all of you are most welcome. Uh, the answer keys will be provided. If you have any queries, feel free to contact any of the faculty. And as yes, Joy Chern is there, he is our staff. Joy Chern also please chat up. Right. So this is, with this we are officially winding up the discussion session. And Chechimara Ringlundo. So people, those who have cleared the exam tell that they are, they are, they are like their mother away from your home. So we'll miss home. So they are busy there with some work. So this is the team which is available here currently. And we have one more session. Did you, are you aware of it, about it? Yes, there is a session by Sibulu Pradeep. She is our dear student. She cleared this year's UPSC Civil Service examination with rank 254, no? Sibulu? 253. What rank is it? 253. So she is going to serve uh, the country in the next year. Her training in Labasana will start in July end. So she is busy with all her things. In between that, she has come here to, to give you a small talk about how what the exam is, how it is conducted, etc. And this is the faculty and team of Shangarai's Academy. So thank you so much for coming to Shangarai's Academy and giving this test. So you, at least somewhere in your mind, you thought of studying in Shangar. I hope it happens very soon. So all the very best. Hope to see you all in the classroom. All right. Thank you so much.
Winston Churchill once mentioned that success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of devotion and commitment. UPSC journey depends on failures and how we overcome it. Today, we have Sibilo who through her perseverance and hard work has achieved All India Rank 253, CSE 2022. Sibilo pursued MA in Industrial Psychology and cleared UPSC at the age of 23. To note her achievements, she is a state level swimmer, NCC cadet and an entrepreneurial venture in jewellery making. With, gre with greatest pleasure, we welcome Sibilo, who has been a part of Shangri Ais Academy to share her UPSC journeys, her experience. Please welcome Sibilo. How was the test? Good. Good? Will you all clear? Like, do you think? How many of you think you'll get the scholarship today? Nobody? Sure. At least one hand. Okay, let's see. I'll be announcing the scholarships. So, we'll get to know. Okay. So, let's hear a small story. Okay. One day, this man, he was walking and he saw a camp of elephants. And he saw that these mighty really huge, powerful animals, they were not caged. Rather, what do we usually do with elephants? Like, how do we put them? Like, how do we? There's a rope, a very fragile rope that's tied to a stick. Now, don't you think an elephant is so huge, they can just break free of this. So a person walking by, he was very curious. And he went and asked the trainer, see, how is it possible that such a, such a mighty elephant is staying tied to that fragile rope. So he said, when the elephant came in as a baby elephant, the baby elephant was not strong enough. And then this rope used to hold him or her. But even when the elephant grew, the elephant didn't realize the amount of strength and the potential it was gaining as it grew up. So what this shows is that our limiting beliefs or our personal beliefs about ourselves can have a huge impact in the kind of outcomes that finally end up in our lives. It can make it or break it for us. So it's very important to understand what is limiting you and to overcome that limitation. And that's what this session will be about. Because what I did is to understand my limitation and then overcome that limitation through my journey and then I went to a path of personal development. Okay, how many of you have heard of the successful launch of Chandrayaan-3? Oh, thank God. At least this all of you have heard. Because can you think any Indian can miss Chandrayaan-3's launch? It gives us goosebumps, right? Those are moments when we're so proud that we're an Indian, right? But there are also times, long, long back, when only US and Soviet Union have been front runners in the space exploration. Even if we said the name India <laughs> in, the era, in the race for space exploration, people, might, people would have laughed. Right? Don't you think so? Back in 1962, when the space agency was being set up, people would have laughed it off. But India, being the fourth nation to do such a, such a big exploration to moon. But today, it's possible. Why? Because back in 1962, and we should imagine the situation of India then, the economy of India then, we should think about, uh, you know, what is happening after independence, the bloodshed that followed it. At that point, visionaries like Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, they saw something, right? They had a vision, which they believed in. They had a plan, which is why all these years later, today, India is not just any country in space exploration, right? When you count, I can count in this finger, that it's almost a fourth and fifth in most of the explorations. Yes or no? And it makes us immensely proud. But did it come without any failure, even Chandrayaan? What happened to Chandrayaan 2? It failed. But when it failed, did we all give up on ISRO? Did we say that, okay, now don't go to moon. This is not meant for us. Let's do something that we're good at. Or why is India as a developing country spending so much money? 
Why are we exploring so much into space? Did we question India in such a way? No. We patiently waited. Because we believed in India. And a lot of people would have criticized us, actually. Could have made us feel like, yes, as a developing country, we shouldn't be spending so much in it. Right? They would have said it. But today, they are also applauding the success of Chandrayaan 3. And is it just Chandrayaan 3? No. There's Gaganyaan coming up. There are so many missions. Now, why am I giving you an example? India knows its potential. And as officers of the country, what we have to do is help it harness that potential. Right? And that is why most of us are here. And these things don't come without failures. But the failure is just going to teach you how to improve or become better. So the first step towards anything in life, whether it be UPSC or something else, is to dream big. Dream so, so, so big that one day when you look back, you will not be able to realize that it is you who is standing here. You take a moment, just think about it. Most of you here would aspire to be IS officers or IFS officers, right? Or IPS officers, correct? Yeah, most of us. So imagine, just take a moment and imagine that today we look up to IS officers. Even I used to look up to all these officers. Today when that rank comes, you're looking back and you've become that officer you were looking up to. Can you all imagine yourself in that position? That till yesterday, the person you wanted to become or the person you used to look up to being so big that other people used to listen to, today, you've become that same individual. Is it like, are you guys relating to that? And that's how big you should dream. You dream so, so, so big that you yourself will not be able to believe that this is me. And that is the kind of growth, you know, the kind of things that dreams do to you. Dreams should never limit you. It should always be more and more, like bigger than your potentials. So just to help you out with how to deal with these limiting beliefs, I also had limiting beliefs. Okay. So when I started UPSC, it was a plan B. Because why? I was also not confident that would I ever make it, right? I'm sure a lot of you have that question with you today. So what were my limiting beliefs? The first limiting belief was that I did an international curriculum. I went to an international school. So it's a good thing in, in the way that I got some privilege, right? But in the other side, I didn't know much about the country in general. I didn't know the history of India, the geography of India, the polity of India, nothing. Nothing at all. So for somebody like that to jump into an examination like this was a big step. Will I ever be able to learn all of this, right? And should I just go abroad, you know, which is an easy thing for me to do? Should I really look at this? But then, what I thought was, and at the same time, my general awareness, right, it was very bad. I was a big zero, not even like you guys. I would never even think of attempting a scholarship test for UPSC. Because <laughs> all of you sitting here as beginners are so much better than me. Because I can tell you, if any of you give the UPSC exam, all of you will come up with around 70 to 80 marks in your prelims. The cutoff would be 80 to 90. It's just that 10 marks which is making all of you stay away from the actual preliminary exam. Now guess how much I got for my first prelims. This is just to state that I started from a very different place than all of you. So much behind where all of you are right now, just because of my background. So guess, what was my prelim score? If I'm saying that all of you, an average person, would get around 70, what do you think is my prelim score? In 2020, I gave my first attempt. Just guess, it's okay. Even if you say 10 also, I'll listen to you. <laughs> Tell me, any guesses? Yes, good. It was 51. And 51 is a very low score. And I knew then, when I was going to give that prelims also, I knew that I'm not going to make it. But that didn't stop me, right? That did not stop me. So that's what I'm saying. My general awareness was a big zero. I knew nothing. My dad, dad will still laugh at the fact that I cleared this exam. When he's getting all the applause and when people are going to him, actually it's a bigger thing for your parents than for you. So, you know, he, he jokes with me. He's like, I still don't know how you cleared this exam. Okay, but I feel great because now everybody's congratulating me and asking me how to do parenting. <laughs> so that's a great thing for him. But it was a big zero, okay, a big zero. But my question to myself was, I didn't have the knowledge, that's true. But I had the attitude. 
I knew that as an individual who wanted, like who was working towards something, I wanted to make an impact. I wanted to make an impact in my life and in the lives of others. And if knowledge is what is stopping me from making that impact in touching lives, you know, in rewriting stories, then I will sit and learn that knowledge. And I did that, and which is why I'm here today. So don't make anything. So being from an in, 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 international curriculum, I would have said I know nothing, especially I'm not at the NCRTs, nothing, no basic knowledge. I had to start from scratch, from scratch, but I didn't stop. And it was hard for me. It was not in my first attempt, it was not in my second attempt, in my third attempt, I cleared the examination. Now, apart from these, so what we can understand from these limiting factors is that don't let any of these personal beliefs negatively stop you from dreaming big. Because if I would have not dreamt then, what I would have said, you know, my general awareness is low, okay? People say that I'm not good enough. How will I become an officer? Let me just go abroad and do a normal job. If I did that, I would never be here. So the first thing is to dream really, really, really big. Now, how many of you here have faced this deep kind of, you know, this deep pain in your heart, hmm? deep pain when you've failed, let's say, in a relationship or in a friendship? or if you've given the examination, in the preliminary examination, you know, that sort of pain, it's like somebody's poking into your heart. Any of you have experienced it? Just one person. Be honest, guys. Should talk about pain. How many of you have experienced pain in life? How many of you have experienced that very weakening moment in life? Come on, can I see a raise of hands? Yes, all of us have. So when we look at researchers, they say that the pain that failure gives an individual, right? It's equivalent to physical pain of going through, let's say, breaking a bone or having a huge cut. It's the same level and intensity of pain that we experience mentally. And this is the reason why a lot of us fear failure. Again, be honest with me. How many of you fear failure here? Thank you. And how many of you did not attempt this year's prelims because you were scared to fail? Thank you. This is something we have to change. So I'm here going to tell you how I tried to change my attitude or my perspective towards failure to just make my life get here. Okay. So just imagine that you're standing and there's a circle drawn around you. All of us. We all have different circles. And inside the circle, there are certain tasks. Outside the circle also, there are certain tasks. Now, when I do the task inside the circle, I always succeed. From my life, I can tell you some examples that I wrote my 10th grade examination. I topped. I wrote my 11th grade examination. Again, I topped. Great. I wrote my 12th grade examination. Again, same thing. Then I went to college. In college also, I got a scholarship. I was like, great. Everything is, it's not that I'm trying so hard for it, it just came. Then I started an entrepreneurial venture. I used to make jewelry. So I made jewelry that also started. There also I was getting profits. So a lot of successes. And I'm sure most of you sitting here belong to this category, right? Most of you sitting here would have done very well in your school. Would be very confident in yourself. Otherwise, why would you come for the scholarship exam? <laughs> right? Unless you're confident, why would you be sitting here today? So I was succeeding everywhere. But, you know, what happens when you keep succeeding everywhere is that you never realize where your boundary is. You'll keep playing within the field, but you'll never sort of grow. So UPSC for me was a big dream. It was a big step for me. And in my first attempt, when I failed, I was very happy because I finally understood the boundary. So I would like to, can I just use the board here? Hmm. How do you use? Is there a pen? Excuse me. Never wait. If you like, I think I would. 
dapat kiting ya. Nanti tu. Okay. So let's say this is me. Okay, my name is Sibilu. I'm gonna call myself Sibi, and this is my circle. So as I said, when I did activities which were when I did activities which were here, I was always succeeding. Okay? Can any of so most of you will also be succeeding, right? In your life, in your career paths, in your classrooms. All of us have successes. But when we keep succeeding within, without trying very hard, that means we're in our comfort zone. Right? But when we fail once, right? When you feel that pain, when you understand that this is where I'm not good enough, that moment is when you reach here. You understand that now your job is not just to celebrate these successes, but to expand your boundary. And that's exactly what will happen. Now, when I come to my prelims, and you will think, another thing is, the cir circle, right? It's different for different people. Like, can I get any volunteer who's willing to tell me their name? Minakshi. Anybody here who has attempted their prelims exam? This year? This year you have attempted? Okay, great. So let's say I'm going to draw Meenakshi's circle like this. Okay, somebody for whom I'm going to draw a small circle, please give me a name. I'm going to draw a small circle for you, so I'm telling you a disclaimer. Any names? Anyone? Vivek. Vivek. Okay, so this is Vivek. Vivek is a small circle. Now, when we start preparing for the exam, we all have our boundaries drawn right in front of us. All our boundaries are unique to us. Right? And we shouldn't be comparing my journey with somebody else's journey. But at the end of the day, what UPSC will do to you is... UPSC's expectation of an individual would be somewhere here. And all of us, and Meenakshi would all already be within the expectation. Vivek would have some more time to get to the expectation. What our task is, is to ensure that we go from here to here. Right? And once you do that, you've reached that aha moment when you've cleared this exam. Right? And that's why all of us are here. But that doesn't mean you restrict yourself to that circle. Yes or no? You should be growing further. You know why? Because then UPSC will become a cakewalk for you. There are different stages of the exam. You might not clear all the stages together. So let's say you get comfortable in prelims. Then when you're here in the prelims level, then this part becomes very easy for you. You can just go write the exam. That's how you see veterans clearing six, seven times their prelims. But they might be struggling with their boundaries that they face during their mains. Right? Okay. So now I'll take you through my boundary of, which is the eraser in this. This one. Erase your mother. Thank you. OK, so coming to my prelims boundary. OK, we can talk about the mains boundary later. So this was me in my prelims of. So I'm just going to share a story with you, okay, about my journey. I got 51 when the cutoff mark was 92. Okay, look at that pathetic situation. People are laughing at me. Can't believe it, guys. You shouldn't be this rude. Now the second attempt I gave, I would say, I grew and gave. Now I want you to guess, okay, how much did I improve when I studied for one year? One year. What did I get for my second attempt for GS? I want guesses. Oh, sure. Thanks <laughs> in being so confident. But I got one, not two. When the cutoff was 87 and the forest cutoff was 99. So forest cutoff is 15 marks above the general cutoff. And I cleared with flying colors. But did I clear the actual exam? No, I made a mistake. So here I made a mistake in GS. That's what I'm saying. You make a lot of mistakes in this journey, okay? Here, 
I did very well in GS1. But unfortunately, what did I do? In my CSAT paper, I couldn't clear. Hmm? Then again, we go to the next stage. That is this year, 2022. This time, I cleared both papers. And I can tell you that this time, for my CSAT paper, so that's what I'm saying. So if earlier we said, right, there's a boundary. So here, this was the boundary. The boundary was huge that I had to cross. 51 is huge. But by the time I came here, the prelims cutoff was somewhere here. I didn't need the forest cutoff. You just need bit like uh, the CSE cutoff to get through it. So I was here that in my next attempt, prelims was a cakewalk for me. It was very easy. I didn't spend a lot of time for prelims, but I spent time on CSAT because I found my boundary. And that's why it's important. Your boundaries are unique to you. You have to identify which one you need to be working on. So this time I cleared both. Now, let me tell you a tip, okay? A pro tip from somebody who has made so many mistakes. Now, to ma make mistakes and learn from them, it's a great thing. You have to be very smart to not repeat your mistakes. But what is wiser to do is to learn from the mistakes of people sitting next to you, people who have done this before you, so that you don't take so much time to clear the exam, right? None of us want to spend a lot of time to clear the exam. So I'm giving you that pro tip, learn from the mistakes of people who've gone through this journey. Okay, keep track of people like me, okay, who've cleared, and look at my mistakes. And know that do not neglect CSAT. This is a learning curve that you need today. Please never neglect the CSAT paper, because you might not clear the exam and lose out one year just because of this paper. <coughs> now, I couldn't use this, tip, this trick of learning, being wise and learning from the mistakes of my uh, people around me for prelims, but I used it very well for mains. Because this time when I cleared prelims, I cleared mains, I went for interview and I got a rank and I'll also get a service which is one of my top preferences. So think about it. First, I made my own mistake and learned. That is one way of learning which all of us should be open to do because we, we have the right to make our mistakes. Otherwise, how will we grow? But that doesn't mean you keep making mistakes. It's not like first prelims you didn't clear, you made a mistake. Then seaside you didn't clear. Then next time mains you didn't clear, you made a mistake. There are eight papers. For eight papers, if you wait to <laughs> you know, make a mistake, you'll never clear the exam because you have very less number of attempts. So what is the take back from this? Be wise and learn from the mistakes of the people who've gone before you, okay? And also make sure that you enjoy making these mistakes because if you never make the mistake, how will you know your boundary? And you know how beautiful this feeling is when you see your score go from 51 to 1 or 2 with one year of effort. You actually see how much you pushed that boundary. And that, I think, has been the most fulfilling experiences I've had. And I've also had a lot of people to help me through all of this. I've had guidance. Especially in this attempt, I would say it was a cakewalk because I took a lot of tests. Even in Shankar, I took tests. In, I, had, I had a lot of people around me who were preparing with me. I had a lot of people who were prepared before me. I had mentors with me. So all of that helps us fine-tune our preparation. Okay? So I hope this is clear. How many of you want to grow your boundaries? Actually, how many of you here want to identify your boundaries? How many of you know your boundaries? Good. So the first thing is don't hesitate. It's great that you came for the scholarship test today. You'll understand where you stand from this exam. And after this, strategize uniquely. Like it should be a tailor-made strategy for yourself. And once you do that, trust me, with proper planning, you will be able to crack this examination. Yes. So, that's it about the fear of failure. So, how many of you here will give 2024 without making excuses. Thank you. Because it's very important. Failing once is not going to define who you are. It's only going to define who you are at that particular point of time. And the moment you cross, the moment you come this side, you will be celebrating the fact that you have expanded your boundaries. But there's also one thing. If you don't work on yourself, you can even contract your boundaries. And that's why this becomes very important. Now, I have a question to ask most of you. 
you might all be confused. How many you? There's this one thing, okay? Out of all the things you gain from UPSC, you lose from UPSC, there's one thing in UPSC that you're risking if you take up this preparation. Can you tell me what it is? What is that one thing that you're risking in your life if you take up UPSC? Hmm? Time, yes. Because if you look at reports of psychologists, the most memorable period of our life, the most memorable, the, the period in which we have most memories from is 20 to 30. You can ask your parents, your grandparents, they would all tell you that they have all those fond memories of their life from 20 to 30. Now by deciding to prepare for this exam, what we're doing is we're going to spend that time confined to a lot of reading and a lot of books, which is true, you have to read, otherwise you will not clear. So you all know this, right? And that's why I'm telling you, if UPSC has ever crossed your mind, ever flashed your mind, then you have to start now. You have to start today. Because if you don't do that, because I'm telling you this from my personal experience, okay? When I graduated, I was around 20 years old. Hmm? And I had a friend. So that time I did BD, uh, my bachelor's in media and communication. So I wanted to venture into my media profession at that point, being a radio jockey. So I was very excited to be a radio jockey. I just wanted to do it part time. And then I would also look at maybe UPSC and other things. And my friend was uh, telling me, no, 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 so you're smart. Okay. If I was smart, I would have done UPSC. You're smart. So you should do UPSC. And the reason why, so he was just, you know, making fun of me. And the reason why he said it to me was, he missed two, three years during his schooling because of certain personal reasons. And I gained one year in schooling because I got promoted when I was in school. So although we were in the same class, he was around two years older to me. So he understood the importance of time and the importance of age. So he told me that this is the best time for you to prepare for UPSC quite seriously. If you wait, if you go into this and that and this and come back, it's going to be too late. And then I said no, because at that time, at that age, no, we all want to do a lot of different things. We don't want to sit inside because there's so much energy, right? In your early 20s, who wants to sit in a room and study? It was so difficult for me. Every time I used to crib to him, like it's because of you and your ideas that I'm sitting here. If I don't clear, I'll blame you my entire life. But today, standing here, I am so grateful to him because I cleared this exam when I was 23 years old. And that's a very prime age to clear this examination. So that one tip, if I would tell you, it's a humble request from my side, that if you're thinking of preparing for this exam, you have to start now. Otherwise, you will regret it. And I'm telling you, you will come back and thank me. If you make it to the list and you become an officer, you'll probably find me and thank me and tell me that it's because I started then that today I've reached here. By starting, I don't mean you start full-fledged, but you have to start understanding the exam. Have to start knowing what possibilities will this exam give me. Because I did that. In around 2019, I started looking at the exam. I started hearing about the exam. But only in 2020, I decided to actually write the exam. But that one or uh, six months was very important in my life because understanding the exam is actually something that is more important than starting to prepare. So time is in your hands today. Most of you will be in your teens, right? 19. Some of you will be in your early 20s. So don't wait, okay? And make sure you come and thank me later because I'll be so happy to see a lot of officers from here, from this, this room itself, okay? So that's about the time. Now in terms of, again, we, we looked at failure from a dis different perspective, right? Now let's look at time also from a different perspective because in 2021, when I, cleared, when I didn't clear CSAT, it was one year wasted for me, right? I was actually prepared for mains. When you look at my boundary, my boundary was very small in terms of prelims. But in terms of mains, I was pretty okay. My boundary was quite strong, okay? I just had to push a little bit more. So I wanted to really write mains in that attempt, but I couldn't write it. So I have one year wasted, right? That's what most people will think. One year wasted, but no. I wanted to think of it from a positive angle. I thought of it as one year gained. And the good thing about time is, time becomes your friend. It becomes a boon when you 
have good habits and it becomes a bane when you have bad habits. So I decided to use this time to ensure that remember that circle that I was showing you? In that circle we had three circles. One was the initial me, then there was what UPSC wanted from me, then there was another circle, right? What I want from myself, sorry. This is what I wanted from myself. Right. We are not here just to clear UPSC. We're also here because we have personal ambitions. Right, to make a difference, to have an impact. Just because you clear UPSC doesn't mean all your questions are answered. Right. And learning does not stop when you clear the exam. It actually starts there. So I've worked on this orange thing. And if, if uh, you will still know me after two years, you'll realize that there's a skill that I learned that I started studying when I didn't clear CSAT, which is actually a sophisticated skill. So it's a secret I haven't told anyone. But once I get to a peak in that skill, I'll be telling people that it's a failure of CSAT that actually made me start this new skill. So I started to work on a lot of things in my life. My exercise, I used to go to the gym, um, my diet, my sleep. I used to just focus on myself, just be very happy. You know, make friends. I used to use the Shankar reading room. I build really good habits. And in the reading room, it's easy to build good habits because everybody has good habits. Like I have a lot of role models sitting right there. Okay, actually upstairs, right? Yeah, sitting upstairs. So many great role models because I used to look at them. They come on time. They study really well. And I was a problem maker actually here. I was the one who used to walk around all the time. I was the one who used to chit chat a lot. So I used to feel bad, you know, wasting their time. But it's good to have friends, you know, to have a peer group who's also studying for the exam, to look up to the people sitting next to you. Um, you know, and to learn from those people. So all these things help me. So these three boundaries are something that you should always remember. One is where you are today. Two is where UPSC wants you to go. And three is where you want yourself to be in the future. And so that's what I'm saying. Time, it's with you. If you have good habits, you'll end up reaching here. If you have decent habits, you'll end up reaching UPSC. If you have bad habits, you'll probably end up where you are today. Okay, so I think that's, uh, those are things that I wanted to tell you about um, the preparation and also about this examination and that it, it's possible. So there's this story that I really like. Um, there was this man. So initially, he bought a Chinese bamboo and he planted the sapling, or not sapling, I think it was a seed. I don't know how bamboo grows, but the story. So please excuse me, okay? So it was a Chinese bamboo. First year, he used to water it. Nothing happened. Second year, watered it. Nothing happened. Till second year, they sort of believed, okay, that something will happen. Third year, nothing happened. Fourth year, that guy gave up. That caretaker went away. He even forgot about all this. Fifth year, he comes back. And somebody told him, remember you were taking care of some, some spot there in the soil? There's, there's something coming out of it. Okay. So he went back to see. He looked at it and said, after five years you grow this much. He was so disappointed. And then within six weeks, he saw that that bamboo grew 80 feet. Now can you imagine how tall 80 feet is? You know how tall Statue of Liberty is? Any of you? Close, 76. It grew in six weeks, 80 feet. So what was it doing for five years? It was dead? No, it was actually growing within. That's exactly what UPSC has done for me. UPSC gives you a lot of roots, not just in your, per in your professional life, but also in your personal life. It makes you look at your failures. It makes you think more positively. It makes you have that ability to have an impact on yourself and a positive impact on the people around you. So that way, UPSC will help you grow roots. But nobody, trust me, nobody will see your growth other than you yourself. And nobody will even believe in you, to be honest, after a point. But you should be ready to accept and understand that you are growing inside. And one day, whether in UPSC or in another aspect of life, you will be able to showcase whatever growth you've made. So I think 
all the years in UPSC that I've spent, I'm so grateful that I was able to do it. And I was also grateful that I had a lot of supportive people around me during the isolation of COVID-19. It was very difficult for me. In 21, I got one or two, right? It was a very good mark. But I didn't clear CSAT because I was narrow-minded. If I had friends around me, if I had mentors around me, they would have told me. I would be able to learn from their mistakes, right? But I couldn't. But after that, when I came out after the COVID isolation, I started to interact more. And I started to learn a lot more from their, from their mistakes, from their lives, and in general, everything, in terms of mentorship, in terms of peers, etc. So that really helps you create the root, the roots within you. And again, I'm repeating, nobody in the world will be able to see how much you grow if you decide to take up this examination. Nobody in the world. And you yourself won't believe that three years down the line, you will be the one standing here. So I think that's it about my journey of UPSC. I would, um, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Any questions with respect to UPSC or, yeah. Yes, thank you. That's a good question. So consistency, I told you, right? It's about habit formations. Motivation will stay for the initial one month. And if all of you go to college, go to school, it's very easy to clear exams in school and college. You study for two weeks or you study for one month and you end up clearing the examination. But that's not the case with UPSC. UPSC is actually not just an exam. It's so much more than an exam. It's actually a journey of personal development and growth that makes you an officer capable of, as I mentioned at the beginning, capable of harnessing the potential of the country. So you have responsibilities when you get to that position and you have to ensure that you learn to be responsible. So what I did is initially when I was in school and all that, I used to be very against discipline. Okay, because I was like, you know, discipline ruins creativity. Anybody who believes that? Ah, okay, good, <laughs> found a friend. Discipline ruins creativity. Discipline is, uh, you know, it doesn't let me be me, etc. I used to actually feel those things. But UPSC changed my opinion about it. Discipline is something that empowers you. Discipline ensures that whatever you have to do in your life, you get it done with. Let's say your sleep, your exercise, your um, diet. There are so many things that you really have to do to ensure a good life. So all that is ticked off. Then the remaining time you have just for your productive development, for making an impact, for making that boundary grow. So before this, before the discipline aspect of me, I told you I was succeeding everywhere but I was succeeding inside my comfort zone. You get it? But when I started UPSC, I had to go outside my comfort zone. And to go outside your comfort zone, you need discipline in your life. You have to build good habits in your life. And whenever I, I used to fall in my preparation, in my consistency, I used to not make a plan to study, but rather I used to make a plan of waking up at the same time, eating meals at the right time, and exercising every day. And once these three are right, trust me, your life is set. You can do anything in the world. I don't know how many of you here, okay, how many of you here for the past one week woke up at the same time? Good, and you said you don't like discipline. Okay, good, fine. That means you do respect discipline, right? If you go to the gym. Okay, okay, see, that's what, he, I think we just changed his opinion also, did we? Slightly. You said you think discipline hinders creativity, but you go to the gym and you are disciplined. During that time, I was so disciplined and the rest of the time, not disciplined. But at least there's one aspect of discipline. That's what I'm saying. When I used to get back to studying, it is not the study timetable that I used to make. I used to make my timetable of gym or workout. I used to prefer yoga more than gymming. So I used to do yoga in the morning. Uh, I used to take meals at the same time every day. It used to really help me with my concentration and focus. And number three was my sleep cycle. So anyone here who does all these three things properly, wake up at the same time, eat at the same time every day, and work out every day? Work out is this. But see, it's only one out of three. And zero out of three for all of you. <laughs> That's what matters. So to be consistent, you have to have your life in your control. To have your life in your control, these little, little things should be in your control. Then the exam will automatically come in your control. And that is what I call by this orange color circle. It's not just the exam that you're targeting. 
in this preparation. You're targeting something more. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for the question. The first thing is newspaper reading is the most, most, most important thing in this examination. Again, question. How many of you have consistently read the newspaper for the past one week? Okay, please give them a round of applause. Because reading the newspaper is actually one of the most important things you need as a person and as a UPSC aspirant. Because UPSC, as I told you, are recruiting officers. It's not a college exam to give you a distinction. It's an exam to pick people who can actually end up doing the job. So to do that, you need to be aware about yourself. So start your newspaper reading. It's a mistake that I also did. Okay, a lot of times because I got lazy. But again, I'm telling you from the other side that please read the newspaper. It's the most important thing. Most, most important thing in UPSC. And you'll only realize that, that when you get to your mains examination. That every single person, mostly, I'm not generalizing, but most of, if you look at the top 10, they go by current affairs and newspaper reading. Like it's that, that, that's that defining factor. Because everybody will prepare for UPSC, but you know what they will do? They'll read the current affairs magazine. They'll go for the easy way out, but it doesn't work that way. The newspaper is very important in creating that analytical ability, it's in understanding different viewpoints and making your own viewpoint. Okay, again, understand that this exam is not about mugging up. This exam is making you an officer. Okay, so always remember that fact. Yes, so in terms of newspaper, I used to not understand anything in the newspaper when I started. Actually, that was one of my first limiting beliefs. I was like, if I can't understand anything, when will I start understanding things? I used to ask myself. It took me around six months. And initially, I used to read the newspaper for around two, two and a half hours. Uh, because it took that much time to comprehend everything that's happening. And it's okay if you take around one to two hours to read the newspaper now. Uh, and about the terms, one thing is, when you do your static portions, that is, whatever is in your main syllabus, that will really help you understand the newspaper. Because newspaper has all the current aspects, the contemporary aspects. But you have to know the static to understand the contemporary. Without knowing the base, how can you know what's happening? So first thing is, go back to your static. Do your static really well. Go through the syllabus. For example, in uh, economy, okay, there's something known as repo rate. So when you first see the word repo rate, you might not understand what it is. But it's a very basic thing that you learn in economy. So that's what I would say. In newspaper reading, you have to go through your static and make it strong to understand how that static is being used in today's world. Okay, in the contemporary affairs. And second thing is, don't go for a lot of, for example, in economy also, don't go for a lot of these sources. Like I've heard people talk about, I think, Ramesh Singh and uh, a lot of these books that they read. Actually, that's not required. You have to go through the NCRT, the newspaper. For economy, I went through budget and uh, economic survey, not just one year, not just the previous year, but two to three years. Because that's where the trends form. Right, things actually happen very slowly. Uh, that I think you would already know. Right, things don't happen like this. It takes time. So you should be aware of the contemporary affairs of two to three years. So that's what you should be doing. So in terms of newspaper reading, to understand the newspaper in a better manner, ensure that you start reading up your basic static portion from your NCRTs and also from your syllabus. Now, once you do that, also remember that don't go too high when you're reading for uh, these things. Don't take too many static books. One base book and the newspaper will supplement it. That's it. And never, ever supplement a newspaper for a current affairs magazine. Okay? Because that's not going to help you. That will help you get through prelims. You might get forest cut off also. But it will not help you clear mains. And mains is the core of this examination. Okay? So I told you, right? I, I had a mains oriented strategy. Which is why when I got to clear, so <laughs> this is a joke that I tell people. Uh, that, you know, prelims is like the ticket. First day, first show. You might not always get the ticket, but it's not like we go back, right? We come back for the next show and you take the ticket. It's like, it's, that's how prelims is. So if you're not clearing prelims, please, please don't be demotivated. It's not even a factor to be demotivated. Prelims has nothing to do with your actual exam, your rank, your mains or anything. It's just a ticket. 
if it had a role to play, they would take the marks of prelims. Okay, prelims is important because there's so much competition and so much population that they have to, you know, sort of, what do you say, filter out the people who are hardworking. So that's what prelims is about. But if you don't clear prelims, please don't go back, please don't turn back, write your mains once or twice and that's when you can make your call whether you want to continue or not and I'm sure before that all of you will be in the service. Yes. Um, see, when we read the newspaper, uh, we won't always get time to make notes out of the newspaper. And even if we do, if we don't revise it consistently, it will be very difficult for us to remember the things we read in the newspaper, right? Even for people who are reading newspaper consistently, it's not very easy. If I ask you this news, what happened? You might not be able to recall it perfectly. You might be able to understand. If I talk about the news, you'll understand it. You'll comprehend it. But you won't be able to recall it. For the exam, what do we need? We have to recall it. We have to show them that we know. So you have to actually study the newspaper, not read the newspaper. And to study the newspaper, these magazines can help you. They sort of give you what you need to study from that article. Because an article will have a lot of opinions. You don't need to remember all these opinions. So read the newspaper and then when you read the current affairs magazine and with that also please go through the previous year questions. So from the previous year question you will understand what kind of questions are coming. And once you understand that, uh, you can align it with the newspaper and very specific important topics you can do from your current affairs magazine. And whatever is given in your magazine, make sure you know it with clarity because that will help you. Okay, and uh, yes, I think that's the most important thing. So with the new, and also at the end when we're revising, right, we will not know what all we've read. We'll forget. So use the compiled magazines to tick it off. Have I read this? Do I know this? When you see that term itself, you should be able to know, okay, I know this. So don't read it. But if you don't know it, you can go and revise. If you have some lack of clarity, you can go and revise it. So yes. And just like Current Affairs magazine, I had a cheat code for prelims especially. And that's how my marks went from 51 to 102. That was testing. So I call this identifying packets of information. Okay, so this is uh, so let's say there's a packet of information. The aim of this packet of information is to get to the prelims of 2024. Just like we want to get to the main list of 2024. The packet of information wants to get to prelims because if it gets to prelims, everybody will talk about it, right? It will get so much attention for the next uh, one year. All those 100 questions will get so much attention. So as a packet of information, I'm just personifying a packet of information, you want to get to the prelims. But not every packet of information is actually prelims worthy, right? In mains, there's analysis. You might be very fond of it. You might read a lot of analysis. But how will they ask analysis in prelims? I mean, it's, it's, it's there, but it's a bit difficult. Prelims worthy, I mean, it's easy to make statements wrong. Now, it's always very hard to lie. Have you tried lying? First level, you can lie. Second level, you can lie. Third question, you're gone. Right? It's very difficult. It's very difficult to lie. It's actually very difficult to set the paper also. It's difficult to make statements wrong in the paper. So only when it is easy for them to make a statement wrong, only that packet of information will have prelims potential. You understand what I'm saying? Not every information that is important for this exam has a prelims potential. But the information which are easy to be made wrong for the examiner has a higher prelims potential. Now we learn a lot of things and we know that UPSC is so vast. I used to tell my dad when I used to start preparing that I'm in Mariana Trench now, I have to climb the Everest, that's my task <laughs> in three years. It, that's the variation. Okay, that's the amount of things. It's like swimming through all the oceans in the world. That's how you feel when you get in. But then how do you streamline it? If you swim through all the oceans, you'll never clear the exam. Trust me. <laughs> you have to know exactly which route to take. And for that, you know who are the first people who find these packets of information? People who set test series. Before UPSC finds it, these test series people will find it. So, Let's say you clear prelims for the packet of information, level one is successful if they get to a test. That packet is very happy. At least I got to a test. Now I have the potential to come in the actual exam. And if one test maker thinks it has a potential, the next test maker will also think it has a potential. 
two tests. We say in the, in the circle that it came in two test series. <laughs> when it repeats for the actual prelims, we say, this question came in three test series. This is just a cheat code, okay? I'm so don't, please don't stick to it, but use it to create an edge over people sitting next to you. So let's say three test series picked it. This piece of information is very, very happy. Finally, you come to prelims. In prelims also, this packet of information came. Now, I am going and writing prelims. I am not worried about everything in the ocean. I am only worried about the exact route from Mariana Trench to Everest. That I get from these packets of information. That means I am doing the highest probable materials for prelims. And that gives you an edge in prelims. Not for mains, this is only for prelims. In mains also you can use this strategy of finding packets of information and creating specific notes on these packets of information. Because you can't remember everything for your exam. A lot of things come naturally. Uh, so for mains, I used to follow the spontaneous answer writing. But I used to do the identification of packets of information. If it has come in a test, let's say FCRA fact, I would have some pointers of, these are the pointers that I can add in my answer factually with respect to FCRA act. And that I used to integrate prelims and mains. Because all the value addition that you learned for your prelims, you will ultimately be writing that in your mains to get an edge over the other candidate. Yeah, so this is a packet of information trick that you can use to, you know, maximize your prelim score. Yes, any other question? Personality test, difficult question. Actually, my personality test didn't, oh, it's, it's a funny story, okay? So I have uh, my age and my background and everything. My knowledge base is not very big. Okay, I have a knowledge base, which I highly respect. But it's not as big as the people, let's say, who are writing the exam. Because we know veterans are writing the exam. People who are working are writing the exam. So you can never compare. Uh, and people in the service are writing the exam. So my knowledge base is very small. So in most of my interviews, I had had to say that I can't recall. Okay, this, this is my boundary of knowledge. I had to state it. And I walked into my actual... I walked into the actual examination hall, ready to say at least five, six, I don't know. Or, you know, I can't recall, sir, sorry. But I didn't even have to say one. That was so surprising. Because they asked me very generic questions about myself, my personality, what I've been studying. It was more like a you know, round table conference I would have with elders in my family. And I think that is what they're looking for. Uh, it would depend, different interview is different. Some people ask for very bizarre facts also. But you should know that there are different kinds of interviews. For me, so I wouldn't say there was a difficult question, but um, there were very interesting questions. If you want me to share interesting questions, is that, so there was this one question about the psychology of terrorism. So my optional is psychology. Uh, and I told him that, you know, in psychology of terrorism, they, they create a community, they have a, a bonding, a brotherhood and everything. That's why most people find it very hard to get out of terrorism. And there are other factors also, mm, like discipline, like, you know, having certain rigid notions about things and everything. So they asked me, in a positive way, how can we use the principles of terrorism? So I was a part of the National Cadet Corps for three years. To be very honest, even in the army or in other disciplined services, we use these principles, but why? For a positive outcome. So I was very happy with the fact that I could link a question to my personal life and look at it from that perspective. So that was one interesting question. Another question they asked me was about women entrepreneurship. So when I was studying in college, I told you about a jewelry thing that I used to do. Uh, and in that, uh, they asked me, because that was my plan B in, in UPSC. That's also another topic of discussion, plan B. <laughs> but I had a plan B. Mm. And then they asked me, uh, how can you promote women entrepreneurship? So most people sort of stick to, uh, you know, things like education, health and everything. But I brought in Kudumbashree and about how self-help groups like that are really empowering. Because when we talk about women, a lot of times when we hear it, um, we think of ourselves, right, or people in our circle. But women in general is a huge topic. And that's the sort of, um, I think, broad approach you need to have at every question. So those little things, I was very happy with myself. I think those are the interesting questions. And my board is very excited, very excited. I don't know why. They kept asking me questions about, you know, principles of psychology. They wanted to know more about psychology. Then at the end, so uh, when the fourth person was speaking, the first person wanted to ask one more question. 
and the board member, it was Satyavati ma'am. So she said, no, no, you can't ask. We don't have time. We have one more person. Uh, but then at the end, she allowed him to ask me the last question. So his last question was, uh, from an interview like this, can we assess um, you know, things like emotional intelligence? Those were the topics in my interview that we were talking about. So I gave a genuine answer that from an interview of 25 minutes, you can't judge how a person will be for the rest of their 30 years, right? So you need <laughs> field work and you need other things, which they will do later on. But I gave a genuine answer uh, about, you know, that it's difficult. But from our mannerisms, from the way we speak, from uh, the words we use, from uh, a lot of body language, you might be able to figure out if a person is genuinely conveying their opinions or fabricating opinions. So that was my answer. So that was my interview experience. Interview score was also decent. It was 184, which is above average. Any other questions? Anybody else? You can feel free to ask me questions because you will not get this opportunity again. <laughs> uh, and I think I've asked so many questions that people here know. I've asked so many questions. It's only because of my curiosity and this annoying nature of asking questions that I'm here today. Even people who come up to me also tell me, you cleared because you're curious, because you asked me 10 questions on one topic. <laughs> so please, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm also tired. Any questions? No? Okay, then I think we'll wrap up. Think a little on general reading, like the general reading for literature. You stick to, I think you've covered books and books mm. mentioning like how personality can be molded also. Like anyway, we have a personality which is set in by the time you start the preparation, but still certain molding you might be able to do like, and how to overcome saturation of preparation once you get into the cycle. Mm. Uh, see, one thing is, um, to listen to yourself. A lot, at a lot of times, we know exactly what we need in life. But our thoughts get hazy by looking at the people next to us, by looking at what our parents are saying, by looking at what our friends are doing. Because trust me, when you wake up, there's a gut feeling in you that's telling you what is the right thing for you. Right? All of us have that. And so just listen to your gut. I think that's what's important. When you want to take a break, take a break. You don't have to always push, push and push. No, that's not what you know. hard work is about or smart work is about. Work, you know, there's a sort of enjoyment that you have to get from the preparation. And another quote, again, he knows this, that I say is that what UPSC taught me is that happiness is a journey. It's not a destination. And the more happy you are in the person you're becoming through this journey, the better rewarding it would be. Because I told you, if you remember the circles, if you become the orange circle, right, you would automatically clear this examination. And I think that is what you should always aim for. UPSC, yes, it's a goal in your life. But what is a bigger goal? Is to become a good officer, right? Is to become somebody other people look up to. It's to become somebody who can actually bring out some change with the powers that you're going to get in the future. Am I right? Yeah. So I think to hit with saturation, understand that when you're preparing yourself, you're not just an aspirant. This is not a school exam. This is not a college exam. Be responsible. Believe in yourself. Also keep listening to yourself. If you think it's right, it's right. You don't have to prove anybody. And you don't have to, you know, have people to believe in you also. Because like the bamboo I told you, the growth happens inside. People will only see it when there's a platform evaluating it. That is your prelims, your means, and your interview. And also in other aspects of life, if you decide to do something other than UPSC. So I think that would, uh, what I would say is with respect to saturation and everything, listen to yourself. Please be you. Right. Please be the person you want to become. If the person you want to become is aligned with the values of what UPSC wants, you will clear this examination. Again, um, so this is general. Uh, the basic static things are what is important. Okay, again, because I make jewelry, there's something else that I say. That there are a lot of beads on the table. Okay, and different answer requires you to put these beads in different ways. A 
Okay, let's say I have some beads and I've given the beads to the three of them sitting there. One person would make a bracelet, one person would make an anklet, one person would make an earring depending on their requirement of it. But just because they're making all these things, hmm, just because they're making all these things doesn't mean that they are using different, different beads. They're using the same beads. So static, basic static in everything is very, very important. All you need are these beads in your life. You can put those beads in whichever way you want, in whichever answer you want to convert your knowledge to marks in the exam. So for static, I would say for psychology specifically, I did the NCRTs. And after that, I did one basic book that's barren. There are different options from which you can pick. And other than that, mm, there was another book called Smarak Swain for applied psychology. And I think that's about it. And previous year questions. Always the static is what is going to make you stand here. Not the bouncers that you hear about. You'll all hear about bouncers in prelims. This came, that came, this thing came. And because this thing came, you have to read this book. And you have to read that book. This came from this book. Doesn't matter. That even I will get wrong. <laughs> Anybody clearing the exam will get it wrong. That is not going to stop you from clearing the exam. Do your static really, really well. Be very confident in your static. And then I think all you need to do is learn how to make these different ornaments. Different answer requires different demands. But the content is the same. So the skill is to make these. So first step is to collect the beads. Next step is to, I would say, assemble the beads in the way you want. And that's exactly what this exam is. In mains, okay? That's what, in psychology also, I used to take the beads, collect the beads. This is my knowledge. My knowledge base is small, but revise it multiple times and create a lot of interlinking between each of these beads. And then finally, I'll be able to give the examiner exactly what they want as per the demand of the question. And that will fetch you marks. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Okay. So thank you and good luck to all of you. I'm waiting to see who the scholarship winner is today. And uh, trust me that um, I told you again that, that one thing I will tell you is time matters and age matters. So if you're planning, if UPSC has just crossed your mind, you have to start today. You have to start right now, actually. And then finally, you'll end up, if you want to become an officer, you'll hopefully become an officer. So thanks a lot. to listen to me. Changed, OK. Yeah, sorry, last thing. What has changed before and after clearing UPSC? Nothing has changed, actually. But people like you turn up to listen to me. <laughs> that has changed. And I hope I was able to add some value. Thank you. Um, thank you, Siblu, ma'am, for your wonderful words. Um, and also, thank you for sharing your experiences and your UPSC journey, and also making us understand the importance of knowing our boundaries. Thank you so much, ma'am. It means a really a lot and also an inspiration for all the UPSC aspirants. And thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. It's the most awaited time of the day to declare the results. So we welcome Arjun sir to publish the results. All right, once again, I know you all are waiting for this. So I will say that the result is more a story of failure than success. And this is the beginning of UPSC journey. Like, say, as Sibylu would have rightly said, we have all faced failures. She failed the first prelims, right? And the f that failure gives you some or pain don't worry, 
you are going to be the winners of tomorrow for sure she is handled it very beautifully look uh, there is uh, more things she would like to tell we have done one interview with her in uh, her and a few toppers five other, other toppers um we, it will get uploaded in our youtube channel in the next 2 to 3 days so do listen to her i was very amazed by how mature she is at an age of say she nan sadan age parayarla but she herself told she is 23 so i was thinking how mature she thinks she has a lot of things to tell adu you know ningalku manasilai kaana samsarikkan thodangi kanja pinne she keeps on speaking which is actually very interesting and entertaining her thought process and the maturity is really amazing even though idu vare nan ayirun ango advice koduthondirunna ingane cheya angane cheya now she she is giving much better and mature advices than the all the faculty here thank you sibulu and that interviews also coming in our youtube channel of with five top us including this year's kerala top arya uh, meera sibulu uh, nandagoban malavika anju veru aitta nammal interview cheyittunna it will come in our youtube channel soon now the results so as i said don't feel disheartened i know the disheartenment and the pain of failures karena namaku we could select only uh, seven people to this list because we announced so top seven will get scholarships appa i am announcing the the people who have today was your day right today was your day and the questions were in favor of you you knew a lot better than all the aspirants sitting here so you are the top 7 today and my whole hearted congratulations you already are winners pakshi ee seven il varathavar right tomorrow will be your day and make use of it as she rightly pointed out thank you for making this process very easy for me tomorrow will be your day the circle she drew and how from today see next year e time le you should be in that position or not next year it will take you 2 years once you clear the exam you should come here and tell me the story of how i failed my sangar scholarship exam and how i become a upsc winner you know upsc rank holder you should tell that so on that note i'm just announcing the uh, 100% scholarship winners top 2 first is for devnarayan and as you can just yes yeah dev naran hearty hearty congratulations so this is the beginning of the upsc journey for you and second is for deepak sudhir so again hearty congratulations thank you so much then 75 please you can sit 75% scholarship is for the next two uh, third rank is for mohammad riyas yes mohammad riyas congratulations akosh as is the fourth person akosh congratulations now the next three ranks rank 5 6 7 will get 50% scholarship fifth rank is for lijin raj lijin congratulations sixth rank is for vikhil v vikhil congratulations and the lone representative of the uh, you know women community is the last rank you should again next time when, see upsc rank varuma nere theriyum ketto don't uh, uh, get because ittavana when we uh, took the kerala list almost all of them were uh, women like oru njangal interview cheyda paaga oru male candidate um baaki naalu vere lady candidates varikum so the plates will turn so the seventh rank is for malavika kc Yes, Malavika, hearty congratulations! So all of you will be getting scholarships. I know you will be feeling a little sad. Sarvadar vannu parisheedi pakshe kitiila, but all of your performances were really good, right? The decision that you just took today that you are going to prepare for UPSC is the first major milestone, right? So to appreciate that gesture, to no, to appreciate that you came here, you prepared for the exam. our director vaishnavi ma'am she is in chennai she has agreed to give a small discount to everyone who is joining the class right so you can contact the office our staff they will let you know uh, the scholarship so th so that don't be disappointed nobody should be disappointed we because we all know the pain of failures right or expectation odu odu yana vannathu we are not disappointing any of your expectations so all of you will be getting this is this is something which came as a surprise for me also from ma'am told like let us not disappoint anybody everybody will be getting a small scholarship and uh, you can contact the team for that so all of you are winners and hearty congratulations to all of you thank you so much hope to see you all in shangrais academy in the classes avade alla hope to see you standing here and speaking like how siblo did in the next two years right you should come here and be the future bureaucrats of the country thank you so much thank you so much for coming to shangrai academy thank you sir success is final failure is not fatal
It just requires the courage to continue till we achieve it. With this quote, we wind up today's program. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming and making this program a great success. And thank you and have a nice day.